May it please the court. Your Honor, opposing counsel, members of the jury, Hayden Duran saw the signs and failed to act. Today we heard a tragic story about two 11-year-old children who played with a gun. And on August 18, 2010, Jesse Duran fatally shot and killed Sidney Park. But this case may be a little different than what you were expecting because we're not here to solely talk about Jesse's actions on that day. However, we're here to talk about Jesse's behavior before August 18, 2010, and how Hayden Durant saw this behavior, <coughs> failed to address it, and failed to warn Andy Park. Hayden Durant saw the signs and failed to act, and that is why we are suing Hayden Durant for negligent parental supervision. Now what that means is Hayden Durant did not do enough to prevent the accident on August 18, 2010. And in order to prove that to you, we had to show you three things more likely than not. One, we had to show you that on August 18, 2010, Jesse Duran acted recklessly. We also had to show you that Jesse Duran's actions were the direct cause and the proximate cause for Sydney Park's death. Now, when we say direct cause, that means but for. But for Jesse playing with the gun on August 18, 2010, Sydney Park will still be alive today. And when we say proximate cause, that means foreseeability. Based on Jesse's behavior, was it foreseeable to Hayden Durant that August 18th would occur? What we heard today throughout today's trial is that Jesse Durant continually had violent behavior. brought before you Dr. Campbell Solo. And he shows you the trend that began to establish with Jesse Duran's behavior. It started out with the picture that Jesse drew, me and my gun. When Jesse was told to draw a picture of himself and his best friend, what he did with that best friend, how that best friend made him feel, this is what he drew. A picture talking about how much he loved a gun how he scared bad kids away with this gun. That's what Jesse Durant did. But upon seeing this, Hayden Durant told you, when my kid drew a picture of pointing guns at other children, it did not concern me. And Jesse Durant told you that Hayden Durant put that picture up on the refrigerator. And on cross-examination, Hayden Durant told you that she did not talk to Andy Park about the picture Jesse had drawn. So then we heard about fights that Jesse got into in school. Now, the teacher and Dr. Solo told you that over the course of the school year of 2010, Jesse Durant got into three physical altercations. Now, based on those physical altercations Jesse got into, Hayden Durant failed to discipline Jesse, and she failed to tell Andy Park that Jesse had been fighting in school. Now, we heard from an email that Hayden Durant wrote that Jesse only wanted to play the game that involved shooting hundreds of people. She told you that she was concerned and that she was worried that Jesse only wanted to play this game. But even though she was worried, she never addressed her concerns with a psychologist. She never addressed her concerns with Andy Park. And she failed to discipline Jesse again. And in that email, it talks about how other parents were telling her about Jesse's behavior. The school teacher told you that Hayden Durant said, I'm sick of people telling me my child has a problem just because he's interested in guns. We know that every adult that was in Jesse's presence, the babysitter warned Hayden Durant, the teacher warned Hayden Durant, other parents warned Hayden Durant, and even though she was warned, once again, she failed to act. But on August 17, 2010, this is when Jesse's behavior took a turn for the worst. We know that on August 17, 2010, Jesse Durant told two adults, the babysitter and his own mother, that he wanted to play with a real gun. Dr. Solo told you Jesse wanted to play with a real gun. Ashta Rosa told you that it was clear that Jesse wanted to fire the Parks gun. And when Hayden Durant had this information, she failed to address Jesse's behavior. She failed to warn Andy Park. Hayden Durant failed to act. Now, when we talked about proximate cause, that means foreseeability. Based on Jesse's behavior leading up to August 18, 2010, was it foreseeable that someone would get hurt 
Was it foreseeable that Sydney Park could lose her life? Hayden Durant told you that herself. She takes Jesse Durant on August 18, 2010, that morning, and told Jesse, I mean it. Guns are not toys. You need to stay away from them. I just want to make sure that nobody gets hurt. Now, even though Hayden Durant thought that someone could get hurt, even though she knew both of those children's safety was at risk, she failed to tell Andy Park, and she failed to prevent her child from playing with that gun. Now, this case boils down to which parent knew what and which parent had the power to change what happened on August 18th. Now, we know that both parents were aware of these facts, that both of those children would be unsupervised in the Parks home. They knew there was a gun there. And Andy Park knew that Sydney knew about the gun. And Hey Duran knew that Jesse knew about the gun. But only Hayden Duran knew about the fights in school Jesse had gotten into, about the warnings from the other parents, about the picture that Jesse had drawn, and about the concerns she had herself about Jesse's behavior. Only Hayden Duran knew that. And even when she knew that, even when she knew that Andy, that Jesse wanted to play with Andy Park's gun, even when she knew that Jesse had an interest in the gun next door, she failed to tell Andy Park, even though Jesse had warned her what he would do the next day. So was it foreseeable? that something like what happened on August 18th was going to happen, even though it was foreseeable that Sydney Park could lose her life, Hayden Durant failed to act, and that's why she's negligent. Find her liable for the death of Sydney Park. Thank you.